What's up everyone, Brian here from Ride Your Money Wave. Just the other day I sat on this porch, signed some paperwork, and opened up the opportunity to make $580,000. Needless to say, it was a good day. And if you've been watching the show, you know that one of my rules of money, one of the, the tenets that I try to follow, is that focus on making great big decisions. If you do that, you don't have to worry so much about the small stuff. And in fact, you don't have to live your life by a very strict budget. And so what I want to do today is take you inside, show you some numbers, and explain how within about maybe eight hours worth of work, I was able to make $580,000. One of my rules of money is that you always want to position yourself on the winning side of a transaction. Now, we are in some rough financial times right now with our economy coming to a grinding halt, over 30 million people being unemployed, and we're all waiting for this economy to open back up. The stock market has decreased nearly 20%. I mean, how can this be good financial times? How can you get excited about this? Once you train yourself to implement that equation to always position yourself on the winning side of a transaction, what happens is, is you start to see opportunities. And that's what I saw when interest rates on home mortgages have decreased to nearly all time lows. I remember when we sold our previous house so that we could buy this current house that we're in. I told my wife jokingly, I said, if you ever question one day, if I love you or not. Remember that I walked away from a 15 year mortgage at 3%. Now, isn't that romantic, right? That is true nerdery talking right there. You know, I was joking around, but there was a little bit of truth in that. The fact was, I never thought that interest rates would ever be that low. And I walked away from a great rate, especially if you think about the fact that inflation increases at about 2%, sometimes 3% per year, I was able to borrow money for a real return of right around 1%. Anyone should take that offer, right? And so when we walked away from that house in order to buy this one, I was a little bit hurt because I never thought that I would see an interest rate that low again until now. And so when interest rates decreased, making home purchases more affordable, I jumped on the opportunity to refinance the house and to free up some cash flow. And so we had three options on what we could do with that cash flow. What I want to do is walk you through some of the numbers to show you how your decision will impact your net worth and your ability to retire. Now those three options are you can pocket the money, you can let the bank keep the money, or you can simply invest that money. And they go in order of increasing net worth. For us, if we were to refinance the mortgage and you take a look at the numbers, we went from having a balance of about $400,000 at an interest rate of 4%. When we refinance, we brought that interest rate down to 3.125%. And it costs us about $2,500 to refinance this and, and close on the house. So in doing so, what we did is we ended up lowering our monthly mortgage by about $476 a month. Now, we could either pocket that money, go out to eat every month, you know, maybe upgrade our Hulu subscription so we don't have to watch commercials. Uh, you know, we could spend it any way that we wanted. but. In doing so, that making that one big great decision to refinance our mortgage would save us $40,139 overall in terms of interest. That is worth celebrating with a big steak dinner right then and there. One of the rules that we have here on Ride Your Money Wave is that you want your money to work for you, not you for your money. So rather than just pocketing that money, we sat down and had a conversation, said, hey, we're already used to paying the full amount of our mortgage. We don't necessarily need this $476. What if we let the bank keep it? Then we'd be paying off the house faster and we'd be paying less in interest overall. 
And so if we add an additional $476 of principal every month onto our mortgage, no change to our cash flow because it's the same amount of money going out every single month that we're already used to. It's already built into our lifestyle. It's already built into our budget. If we were to do that, we would save $69,579. Now, we give away $40,000 and it ends up saving us $69,000. That's a 73% return on our investment. Not bad. It also shortens the length of the loan and in doing so allows us to live debt free even sooner. This sounds like a win-win, right? We just went from saving $40,000 to now saving $69,000. This just keeps getting better. One of the rules that we have in money is that capital flows to where it receives the highest return. Now, if I can borrow money at 3% and inflation is eating away at the purchasing power of that money by 2%, that means that I can Essentially, I'm borrowing money for just a real rate of 1%. And on top of that, there are tax incentives and tax write-offs that I get by owning my own home. I get to write off a, uh, the interest on, on this mortgage. And so the effective rate is hovering right around 1%, maybe even less. So I'm actually in no hurry to pay this mortgage back because I'm borrowing money at such a cheap rate. And so if I'm in no hurry, what else can I do with this money? I can invest it. I can invest it in a diversified portfolio of low cost index funds that is relatively conservative. Sure, I have 30 years uh, of cash flow that I'm gonna be putting in $476, but by the time I go to retire this debt, I'm gonna be near retirement, so I don't really want a ton of risk in this portfolio. So we're gonna be very conservative with this last estimate, and we are going to use a 7% rate of return rather than a historic rate of return in the S&P 500 of about 9.5%. And in doing so, if we were to contribute that additional $476 every month into a brokerage account at a rate of return of 7% for 30 years, that is the length of our mortgage, we would have an additional $580,706. Now that is a reason to celebrate. Setting this up took me probably eight to 10 hours worth of paperwork, digging around, uploading some documents and getting it ready to refinance. Plus, once this money starts to finally come in, I'm gonna automate my investments, contribute this 476 a month into a brokerage account, direct it where I want it to go. And in doing so, if I get an average rate of return of 7%, I will have over half a million dollars waiting for me in 30 years. That is pretty exciting. So the title of this video, how I made $580,000 in a single day, it's not necessarily that I'm receiving that money in a single day. No, I'm receiving it over 30 years. It can be a little misleading, but the idea is that I set up a system that is going to generate that money and all it did was take me a single day. This is why it is so important to make big, great decisions when it comes to your money. Because making two decisions, I want to refinance, and here's where I want that additional money to go. That's two decisions. That's it. Making those two decisions is so much easier than, say, not drinking a $3 latte. I would have to not drink almost 200,000 lattes in order to save the same amount of money. Hopefully you can understand and you follow it along that you want your money to work for you. And if you make big, great decisions and you understand the way that markets work, in this case, 
interest rates in the mortgage market, uh, you can play the game with a better, deeper strategy in order to save money and make money. Before you go, make sure you hit like and subscribe to this channel. Share this with your friends. We are all in this together. The goal is to make a community of like-minded people and so we can go out there and go live your best life. Till next time, take care.